Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you. I'm Cal Jam Land, uh, Billy D here with another amazing pre Cal Jam podcast sponsored by our great friends over at Vox Life. Jay Dollywell stepped up to the plate big time this year to help sponsor Cal Jam so we can make this the most amazing show you've ever been to. I'm but I'm really super excited today because I have the very lovely and beautiful and articulate and intelligent president of the CCA, Leslie Hewitt, on the line today. Good morning, Leslie. It's morning for me, at least. Good morning, Billy. It's morning for me as well. I'm in Northern California and so happy to be here with you today. And you're excited about being a Cal Jam. Oh, yeah. You even changed some of your plans, which I was excited that you did for the, your... Yes. Yeah, cool. Yes, yes, yes. So, I'll right be now... I'll flying in from Florida, hanging out with uh, Grant Cardone and the 10X guy, so I'll be bringing all that to Cal Jam with me, and totally had to change my, my plans to be there, and you know what? You're worth it, Billy. Thank you. No, the profession's worth it. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Yeah. I'm just great. trying to create a vehicle so that we can get our message to the world and the people can see the truth. Because we were, uh, we kind of briefly were discussing what we we're going to talk about before the the uh, we started this podcast. You were talking Bruce Lipton. I mean, there's a. I don't know if you read the new book, uh, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart, yet. Not yet. No, it's a great. You'll. No. It's right. It's right up your alley. But it just talks about the whole science. The science, because everybody wants to be evidence based, and I have no problem with evidence. Uh, especially if it supports the chiropractic principles, which it does if you even like listen to anything that Chestnut has. Say. But in that book, they basically state that the science of the heart, we've got it all wrong. And all the stuff that we've been doing, all the drugs and stents and all the bullshit medical stuff that we've done for years, really is wrong. So again, this is an MD. This is not Billy D spouting off with his you know chiropractic conspiracies. This is just that science changes. The science of Today will be obsolete in 30, 40 years, probably even faster than that. So I don't really put all my eggs in that basket. And again, I'm big, big in science. I was a chemistry major. So uh, you, what I'm really excited about is the CCA has taken a direction where we're really being more proactive. And I feel that it's gone more of a subluxation kind of based model. Why don't you elaborate on the direction the CCA is going right now? Well, I just want to share that we had Matt Hubbard as president, followed by Brian Stensler, then me, and the president-elect is Danny Gambino. So you've got four presidents, two coming from LifeWest, two coming from Life University. Matt did a year. Brian did two years. I did two years. Uh, Danny's coming in in July for one year, and if he gets reelected for a second year, that's a total of seven years that you've got the Life paradigm uh, running legislation in the state of California. And what we're doing is we're restructuring the state of California so that we can get into the capital and educate our legislators who we are as a culture. And what I can share with you, and this is, this is like my insider information as president that I've discovered in the last two years, our legislators have no clue whatsoever who we are and they're very very confused with our language so some of the stuff I'll be sharing at Cal Jam is that this is coming like hot off the press they're sharing with us how they want us to position ourselves and do, do you want to know how they want us to position ourselves politically you're gonna love this they want us to position ourselves as the non-drug solution to all the problems that are happening right now. That's exciting. Yeah, so, that's very exciting. Especially yeah, with the so, huge, 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 huge opioid epidemic we got going globally, but especially here in the United States. Yeah, so it's not so much, I mean, I embrace subluxation, innate and universal intelligence, and the way I share that is that's the Ark of the Covenant for us. That is our language, and I would share even more to our politicians, that is our proprietary glossary. We own that language. But what the politicians are saying to us is they don't have our education. They don't even know what that means. It goes in so deep into the nerve system. They don't understand it. So I'm just sharing, and I'm going to share this at CalJAM. What they want to hear from us is that we're the non-drug solution. We're cost-effective. We're safe. And we're patient-centered. 
And, and what they're saying is if we can do that, it's actually going to open up access to more patients coming to see us because there is a problem right now in the healthcare delivery system. Oh my God, a huge problem. It's and, all and backwards. Have, it's backwards. Patients only have access to the medical model for conditions that we are the solution for. So that is what Matt, Brian, myself, and Danny have just done is we have positioned the CCA to be the leader in healthcare in the United States politically to position chiropractic as your number one choice for healthcare. And I think another thing, which you didn't say, but I'm sure you've included in your discussions with them, but it's just for our audience. It's important for our legislators to know that we're actually going to work on the cause and correct the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. And what's interesting in that book that I was talking about, uh, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart by Dr. Cowan, is that they talk about stuff that we've been talking about in chiropractic. And I'm just thinking to myself, I wonder if this guy knows the power of a chiropractic adjustment because he talks about the effects of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system on heart health and Really, that's what he addresses with his heart patients and whether they have stress. But I don't think he really gets into the structural aspects and the effects that the spine has on the nervous system where I know chiropractic, where there's research to support this, that chiropractic really helps people go from being in sympathetic dominant to a more parasympathetic state, which is where healing occurs. I feel that most of the disease that we're talking about, whether it's you know heart disease or immune compromisation, uh, whatever it is, most diseases are more prolific in a more sympathetic state. So, again, chiropractic is amazing at addressing the cause, but it's also about improving the overall health status of the individual by taking people into a more healing state into parasympathetic. So, I agree. And and when when I, when I talk to our lobbyists and our legislators like that, it's like whew, okay, they don't have a clue. Right. So. The way I bring that down is when I share with them, you're either in a state of ease or a state of disease. It's like something switches on for them and they go, wow, I never thought about that. So then I get into stress management, which is that parasympathetic, sympathetic, because they don't understand that. But they understand stress. Right. And, and then to also talk about, you know, what our forefather said, trauma toxins and thoughts. Right. So what I'm sharing with our politicians now is trauma, toxins, thoughts, and talking points. So I added another T, and the talking points are really what we need to harness as chiropractors because we have language that they don't understand. And to your point, the MDs are basically writing books that support who we are and what we do. They have so for we years. have to harness that. Right. Yeah, you could go back even to when I was in school. I can't even remember the name of the book, but it was basically discussing the somatovisceral reflexes in the, the body. It was core. It was core. Uh, I don't know remember the title of the book, but it basically supported our chiropractic philosophies. And we have chiropractors that are more in, more interested in, in bellowing up to an allopathic profession and being more medical when we have most of society seeing that the failures in medicine – and that is really the number one cause of uh, preventable death in this country. Why would you want to, you know, ally with that? I mean, again, I understand that there's there's benefits to medical care as far as emergency and crisis care and putting the fires out. But really, as far I don't think medicine does a very good job at teaching anything as, that's really perpetuating health. Other, in fact, I've, uh, most drugs, in my opinion, allow a person to continue their same suicidal behavior. And not really address the cause of the problem, which is usually in the most in most cases is lifestyle. And by giving someone a pill, you just allow them to continue all the bullshit that they were doing that got them in the state that they're at. And on top of that, now you've got a chemical substance that's creating other side effects, which really it's making the problem worse in the long run if you really understand the physiology of taking drugs on a regular basis. Yeah, and you know just addressing that evidence-based research and all the people out there that are in chiropractic that want to start getting into the medical model. Do you know what I say? 
let them do the research, let them validate who we are as chiropractors. And what I can tell you, just in my two years of being the president of the California Chiropractic Association, they want to see the research, and there is tons of research out there. Oh, my God, it's all over the place. So let those people that want to do the research do the research. We're grabbing it, and we're actually using it to validate. And what the politicians are saying is, Thank God there's a solution. You guys just need to get organized as a chiropractic profession. And I real, I've always said organization will win every single time. And that is where we need to just gather all this information, organize it. And, you know, I've shared with you, Billy, the power of the quantum field. Right. I'm really mindful of what I'm putting into the field. And what I'm putting into the field is... A very deliberate strategy that's sequenced so that our politicians will go, aha, okay, you guys aren't the whack jobs that we thought you are because, you know, they are very confused why we get involved in certain conversations. And if they understand who we are as a culture, they're going to get us. And they're, for the first time at the Capitol, saying they're very excited if we can pull this off. And, and what I would like to say to everybody, um, I know we're not allowed to swear on your podcast, you but if we can't, can I swear? Yeah, we can do whatever you want. I already said bullshit, so. Okay, well, if we can't get this opioid crisis handled with who we are as the number one non-drug solution, we're fucked. Right. I mean, if we can't get this one thing handled politically, then, you know, we're not very organized. And that is really... Yeah, I mean, that's like, come on, that's like our bread and butter, dude. I mean, that's even the evidence basers will agree that we're great with pain. You know, that's what their whole focus is on, you know? Whereas, I mean, on my practice, of course, people come to me with pain, but what I do is I teach them the chiropractic story. And again, half my practice is kids. In fact, I just adjusted a baby right before this, it's six months old. Uh, not because they're in pain, it's because she was having some some matter visceral complaints, which will be obviously, you know, helped by a chiropractic adjustment. So, yeah, I get it. You know, if we can't handle like our simplest, like here, they're throwing us like a softball, man, and we're not, we can't hit that sucker. We're in, we got some problems. Yeah, and they're throwing us a softball like we're playing t-ball. I mean, they're lobbing it into us. I mean, right. if we can't hit that. So you don't feel. Sometimes I get a little bit jaded you don't feel that most of these politicians are already bought and paid for by big pharma oh they're all bought and paid for and you know the topic that i'll be talking about at cal jam is follow the money of course I mean, follow, follow the money follow the patent right right follow the patent which by the way Bayer bought Monsanto, so you know they're going after the marijuana fields. Just I'll just throw oh, that as a little That's sidebar. Right. Monsanto was behind the whole like initiative to legalize it. You know that that scares me when you got somebody when you got Monsanto. I call them the devil, the ones that spray carcinogens all over the entire planet, and really want to just. It's all about suppressing people. It's all about compressing them, putting them in a little box. And then basically putting them as part of the herd and, and controlling people and controlling the populace. And ultimately, it's about decimating and depopulating the planet. I mean, you don't have to be – and that's why I love you so much because you and I are – we're both the same. <laughs> it's like they want to call it conspiracy theory only because they're in pure denial or the fact that they haven't done any research or they've just got their head so deep up their ass that they were just like there's no way of pulling it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> To me, it's like, oh man, I love it's like, you. you know, like, do I have to really like teach people about chem? I'm so sick of trying to teach people about geoengineering and chemtrails. It's like, dude, they do it in front of you every day, and then people want, still want to tell me that's just frigging water vapor. Well, you and I are old enough to realize that that shit never happened before, like 30, 40 years ago. I mean, I wanted long time ago as a kid. I say this all the time. I wanted to be a weatherman, and I mean, I know clouds, and then I remember the. 20 years ago, I started seeing this phenomena of these all these new synthetic man-made clouds, you know, and you can see that, you know, the CFR, the, the Council on Foreign Relations, they talk about it as, as they call it stratospheric aerosol injections. I mean, they've got patents for all the uh, 
the injectors that they they spray all these substances into the environment it's not like they're hiding it from us it's just people just don't want to admit that they're being poisoned every day and i didn't mean to go off on a chemtrail tangent but you and i can we can go down any conspiracy theory and it's conspiracy truth so i said that well and that's what i love about you and cal jam is you're willing to speak the truth on those conspiracies and just to address that whole thing about follow the money and follow the patent and yeah the politicians are bought but here's the thing wherever consumers are buying is where the politicians are going to go and right so we need to just educate the consumer our patients and these large audiences of people, which is why I'm motivated to bring my woman's community to Cal Jam because I have been sort of giving them tinctures of information, but they need to come into a collective room like Cal Jam to really hear the truth. And and here's what I've been sharing with women in my community, you know, my big wow community here is women are making 87% of the purchases. They have purchasing power. They're the number one consumer in healthcare. Right. They're misinformed. They are so misinformed. And so can we say we some can, of them might even be a little bit brainwashed? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. I love that facial expression. Absolutely. So what we need to do, <laughs> you're funny, Bill. So what we need to do is we need to educate the consumer. And you know what? Wherever the consumer is buying, I promise that's where the politicians will go. Because there's only one thing the politicians are really, really concerned about. Like, honestly, do you want to know the number one thing they're concerned about? Green? Getting reelected. Oh, that's it. really? That's it. I thought it was money that's first and then that. No, getting reelected. I mean, they have to raise money, of course, right? And they're going to go to the biggest powerhouses like Monsanto, Big Pharma, oil, you know, those are your big insurance. Those are your big consumers. Those are where the money is. So right. if we can take the money and move it and shift it and put it somewhere, I promise the politicians are going to go where the money is. It's, so there you go. Follow the money. So let's move the money. Now, part of the, uh, my detractors or my haters uh, want to think that a lot of the things that we talk about at Cal Jam are conspiracy theories. So that basically negates the value of what Cal Jam is about. But like you said, I mean, there's not really too many other people, you know, other than your David Wolfs and your uh, Mike Adams with Natural News. You got Cherry Tenpenny who's speaking, who's very vocal about vaccines. Why is it, I wonder, that we even have within our own profession people that want to deny the fact that this stuff's going on? I mean, is it just, do you feel that they're brainwashed too, or what? I gotta tell you why, because I hang out with them. And okay, watch. good. Yeah, I do. I mean, as the president of the California Chiropractic Association, we call ourselves an umbrella organization. So it's like your standard bell curve, right? You have the majority of your population here. Then you've got some believers out here and some believers out here. It's, it's, it's a typical bell curve. And I'll tell you why um, they don't. It's not that they don't believe it. Because if I get them in a room and say, do you vaccinate your kids? And they say no. Um, but I'll tell you why they don't want to go where you're going. is because they believe that chiropractic uh, we have the Chiropractic Act, which was initiated in 1922, and they want to protect that Chiropractic Act, and they really believe that that's what we should be doing, which is the, the key word for them is scope, 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 scope. Vaccines are not in our scope. Drugs are not in our scope. Chemtrails are not in our scope. Right, right. Right? All these things are not in our scope. So why are we diluting who we are as a chiropractor and going into the capital and getting outside our scope? If we were to just focus on, and some of them it's musculoskeletal, some of them it's neurological, pediatrics, whatever it is, I'll tell you, my experience of talking to all of them, and, and the, the small little group over here that does want drugs in the profession, I can address that next, but... The majority of our people want to stick with scope. 
and what scope is, is chiropractic. And so just to address that, they don't want us like at CalJAM to get outside our scope because what happens is our politicians are actually checking out your website, my website, and they're going and they're going, why are these chiropractors getting outside their scope? That well, is I mean, as a chiropractor, right can't you talk about anything else other than just chiropractic? I mean, I have other interests, whether it's playing the guitar, which, you know, if I teach somebody to play the guitar, is that outside my scope? Or I take somebody and teach them how to surf. If I teach them how to eat and I teach them the fact, I mean, you talked about earlier the three T's. I mean, part of what we do is teaching people about trauma, toxins, and thought. So if I teach them a meditation workshop, is that outside my scope? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a chiropractor 100%. I get that. But as a humanitarian and a lover of people, I don't want people poisoning themselves and maiming their children. And I mean, if there's, it's all about prevention to me. And again, I mean, I was a chemistry major, so I feel I got a pretty good chemistry background. I was into nutrition. And, and I mean, I know I own what I teach people. Yeah, I understand nutrition isn't, isn't part of my scope in chiropractic, probably if you got really strict about what we're talking about. But you know, people want guidance. They want leadership. They want people to you know, help them through this haze and fog that's, that we're all living in and navigating this jungle of not only health care but toxicity. And part of it's just you being open enough, not because it's in your scope. It's because you give a shit about people and you give a shit about these kids that are being friggin' just traumatized and contaminated and poisoned to death. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, where do we draw the line on that shit? You know, it's for me, it's like I just do it because – I can't shut up about it, you know, when I'm, when I'm seeing, like, I look outside and we're frigging getting just hazed to death, I mean, it frustrates me as a human being that we're not only destroying human health, but we're destroying the planet, so, I mean, I talk about Fukushima, I talk about what we're doing to the oceans because I'm a surfer, so I take off my frigging chiropractic hat once in a while, and I get into the fact that I give a shit about people, I give a shit about your kids, I give a shit about the planet, I give a shit about the ocean, I give a shit about, the, again, I'm freaking going to be 60, man, and I know you're probably you're 43 or something. It's not about it's not about me. I mean, I got another good 40 years, but these kids are screwed. Let me use your word. These kids are fucked unless the reality of what we see that's going on on the planet. Like, here's the deal: they they can like push all this pro vaccine shit and all that shit, and people say, "Well, it's not." A, who else is going to talk about it, man? Nobody else has the balls. Nobody else has the ADOI mentality that you were created perfect in the in the likeness and image of god you don't need all these drugs injected nobody else is going to take a stand on it except us and i think by us saying that it's not within our scope is bullshit because the fact that they're going to come after us next and then you're not even going to have a chiropractic profession we're already seeing we're already seeing the enemy within who happens to be people that don't even believe in chiropractic I, one of the my associate here in my practice was saying that the subluxation <laughs> isn't even a priority in the education anymore. I mean, look where we're going as a profession, and then you know, ask yourself, where is chiropractic going to be in twenty, thirty years? It, it won't even be on. It's going to be just like another osteopathy absorbed into medicine and then denigrated to just some you know back pain model and only low back pain for that matter of fact. So I had yeah, to go it, off on a little tangent there. No, and your tangents are brilliant. That's my tangent as well. And if we can sequence our tangents, and the way we're going to sequence our tangents is on the talking points that our politicians want to hear. So one of the talking points is patient-centered. Right. And everything you just said goes under patient-centered. And what we need to do is share and sequence the conversation so that we can build the relationship with politicians because they don't know who we are as a culture. They think we're just back doctors. They don't understand the nervous system, the spine, the brain. They don't understand why we're getting into all these other conversations. So we just need to get organized. We need to sequence the talking points. And one of the talking points they'd love to hear from us is is that we're patient centered so that it's not so Define what you mean by patient centered because to me it's pretty obvious being patient centered yeah. loving and caring the patients which we as chiropractors I know probably do better than probably any other profession and I don't know why that is I just maybe that's just me I just know I really truly care about people and that's one of the reasons that I'm still in practice I mean obviously I could go full bore cal jam and not even deal with my practice but for me 
I love people. I love the kids. I love being around people. And it gives me kind of, it, it keeps my fingers on the pulse on what's going on as far as what's important in society today. And for me, I see all the, the, the pillage and the damage and the, just the destruction that, I mean, I see it, man. I see it every day. I see these kids that come in that their lives are fucked. Like I'm using your word. They're screwed because of the fact that we, nobody had enough cojones to stand up and tell people the truth i mean i do vaccine workshops in my office and i've really almost lost like i don't know it's just hard for me to do those workshops because i don't know what to tell people anymore i mean they're, they're basically it's been mandated now in california and I, I was proud that the cca stood up for it but then you're you guys had backlash from that probably as well big time yeah so tell me about the backlash you had well, what the politicians are saying is we need to restructure our language so they can understand why we did what we did. And that's what we're doing. That's, you know, the last two years has been restructuring the CCA so that we can get into the Capitol and, and basically educate the politicians. And they're basically, the backlash is they don't understand who we are. They don't understand why we're getting outside of scope. And so we need to let them know we're not just back care. We are patient-centered. And then all these other talking points I already shared with you, cost-effective, non-drug solution. We're going to increase access. We've, we've got to share those talking points. And then we've got to build the conversation on those talking points. And the patient-centered talking point is that we are concerned about lifestyle we see patients more than the MDs because we're concerned about activities of daily living, which ADLs, by the way, is like an acronym in the work comp and the insurance system. So we can use the government systems that are already in place to use their talking points to educate them about who we are as a culture. And they're just, they're really confused. So, you know, if you can just trust that the CCA is rebuilding those relationships, we're restructuring a new paradigm at CCA so we can get in there and educate them who we are. Um, and the backlash is they are saying that the CCA just sort of, we, they think we put the cart before the horse. They think that we went after something without really building the foundation of who we are. And they're just saying they're going to give us an opportunity this year in 2018 to rebuild that relationship. And one of the things I'm going to be doing at CalJam, which so is a good let segue. Let me ask a quick question. The cart before yeah. the horse. What, what cart are you talking about? So when we went after the vaccine okay, bill. Okay, okay. That's what we I went after I just that you, bill. I, that's what I thought, but go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. We went after that bill, which, you know, we had to. And, um, you know, CCA was really just like harnessing the mommy and me groups because they were out of control at the Capitol. So we really actually controlled that. It, was, it would have been a huge nightmare if the CCA didn't control that at the Capitol, which the politicians won't acknowledge that we actually controlled a big mommy and me like fiasco. And so that we're getting the backlash for really controlling that issue because they're like, you guys went ahead and did that, but we don't even know who you guys are as a profession. So why don't you do that first? And then we're open to hearing why these other issues are a concern for you. So that's what we're doing in 2018. We're going to spend the entire year to get those politicians educated on who we are, our terminology, who we are as a profession. We're not just backcrackers. We're patient-centered. And then the number one thing we need to let them know is we are a non-drug solution because right. they've got a huge problem right now. Right. And I think we should also echo that within our own profession. We have factions within our profession that obviously would love prescriptive rights and, I mean, I had just got a phone call with, I did a podcast with Guy Reekman, uh last week, and we were talking about the state of the colleges, and when the co and again, I, I, I can have my opinion on what colleges are right and which ones are wrong. That's my opinion based on my own just research and just having my ear to the planet, you know? Uh, but what we talked about was that that's where we draw the line in the sand, bro, you know, our sister. Uh, that's, it, it 
we're a drug-free profession, okay? So anything outside of that is not coming into chiropractic. But we're seeing, like I said, more people get into chiropractic because it's a great way to make a living. Or maybe they didn't get in medical school and they want to come into chiropractic and they want to turn it into a medical profession. See, and that's where I'm going to stand. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm drawing the line there, but I'm going to stand there and I'm not backing down on that. Guy Reekman's not backing. I know you're not backing down. Everybody that comes to California is not going to back down on that issue because that's where we start to muddy the water. Again, I understand, you know, maybe we shouldn't be so vocal about certain things, but the real reality is what we do as a chiropractor in our office is number one, teach. I feel that's the most important thing we do. Two, second, and most importantly, we adjust. And we adjust to remove subluxation to allow a greater expression of the innate intelligence of the body, which is just basically encompasses the whole universal intelligence, the God that's out there. It's the God within you, is which we call innate. So, again, that might sound a little too nebulous for these scientism people that really want to take chiropractic a more allopathic direction. I'm with you. I've got the, the line drawn in the sand as well. I believe everything that you just said. And I have got some insider information in the last two years. So I'm taking what you and I believe in and restructuring it in a way that our politicians can okay, understand. Yeah. But I agree that bringing drugs into the profession is a slippery slope. And what the politicians are saying is they're not looking for a drug solution. No. They're looking for a non-drug solution. Right. So, I don't know. What is it? Is it just a self-esteem thing or is it for a financial issue that these guys want to bring drugs into the profession? I mean, I, you probably have a better finger on the pulse on that than I do because, I mean, I don't really hang out with anybody that really thinks that way because I really only hang around chiropractors that obviously resonate with the way you and I really practice chiropractic well here's what i've discovered and i'm happy to report this because not only do i go to cal jam but i go to the other side conventions as well and you know what they're they're screaming from the stage at their conventions what non-drug they are they are then why do they want prescriptive rights because they feel that they can get people off drugs then too or what yeah i mean that's what they're claiming but there is a small percentage of people that probably could benefit from the money. I mean, let's just be honest. They probably could. But I, I really just Is there just that much from, money really in dealing those drugs? The opioids? I, and I don't think so. I, I really think that the, the small group that you're talking about is a very, very small group. And remember I mentioned the bell right, curve? Right, right, right. We're right. way over on one side. Right, I mean, okay. it is such a small group. I wouldn't even worry about it. And as long as you've got leaders in place like myself and Danny Gambino that's coming in next and you that's doing CalJam and all the other great people like Guy Reichman and everybody else that we embrace because they've got the line drawn in the sand – it is such a small group, and like I said, I go to all, as president, I go to all conventions all across the country, and I even go to the other side, and they're not talking drugs from the stage. Um, even Heidi Havoc is going to all the conventions and sharing her research, and they're embracing her. How could you not? Exactly. So I would just, just to relieve some of that, just some of that angst angst let's call it that it's a very small group billy and you know the larger part of who we are as chiropractors really really endorse uh drug-free chiropractic and yeah, but you know not people, everybody endorses what percentage of our california chiropractors want to move away from using terms like subluxation innate intelligence adjustment and want to go more allopathic do you know that number? Are you having? Any I, I don't know that number. It's such a small number okay, that right, I can't. Yeah. Like it is such a small percentage of who we are. So in reality, the haters that were on your CCA page the one day that when you had mentioned that you were aligning yourselves with CalJam or you're going to be at CalJam, I don't. I don't want to use the words aligning. Those. That's just a small minority of just. Uh, yeah. I know, I, yeah. They're they're a niche group. Okay. 
All right. I wouldn't even worry about them. No, I'm not. I, dude, I don't. I, I love it. Bring it on and say, I always say, just spell my name right, bitch. That's all I say. That's all I say. Okay. That's, <laughs> and you can spread it in big words. You call me a conspiracy theorist. Just spell my name right. Let me ask you a different question because I've always really been into increasing membership and I just don't understand why a, a chiropractor practicing in their own state doesn't support the CCA and doesn't become a member. And I, here's what I hear, and this is really pisses me off, that, well, you know, back 20 years ago, they used to line themselves with the AC. And I go, dude, we've got all new leadership. It's young. It's vibrant. It's so I, I don't – what is it why chiropractors don't want to join their own state association? To me, because to, to me, I mean, I don't want to do – I don't want to go to the Capitol and talk to a freaking bunch of politicians. That's just not my style, okay? I mean – <laughs> I, I don't think I would do good in that environment. That's just not me. So that's why I like to be a member and pay my dues and have people like you or Danny Gambino that are a little bit more articulate, a little bit more, you know, PC. You got to be PC if you're talking to politicians. And that's the one thing I've never been good at. In fact, that's probably why I have so many haters. Uh, but what is it about people not joining their – or in, what any organization, is it just mo the financial contribution or – or is it that they feel that morally that they can't support something like the CCA? Tell me what it is because I'm just – I'm lost for just like words to describe. I don't understand it. Number one, they're saying they can't afford it because they can barely keep their doors open because insurance isn't paying for chiropractic. I know. Oh, my it's God. A, I know. So they're relying on insurance. They're relying on – they're like, oh, I can't afford it. So it used to be 79 a month. We just reduced it to 59 a month. So that's like a cup of coffee a day at Starbucks. It's actually, that's that's less than a cup of coffee a day you know, People Starbucks. tell me they don't have time for this or that, and then they go home and watch four hours of freaking TV, and I, it's like, you know, it's all priorities. And the reason, you know, their practices suck is because of that same, it's it's in their, it's it's so easy today to be a chiropractor, to, to I mean, yeah, we don't have their, but I don't even like when people come in with insurance anymore. It's just like here. You got a problem, you know, and I teach them. I teach them. I get them to understand that their problem is subluxation and we're the answer to their problem. And then I work out a program and then I work out something that's affordable for them. I mean, you know, I grew up through the Mercedes 80s. I know what it was like. You know, yeah, it was super easy. You didn't have to do anything. You just had people come in and you, you know, build their insurance and, you know, people had no responsibility. But now we're in a day and age where people need to take responsibility for their health. And they need to pay for it, just like they pay for going to the stupid football games and the beer that they drink and the vacations that they take and all the things that, you know, to me, are you know, it's it might be important to them. I mean, but your health should be your number one priority. And then your, then your kids, number two, because I say it all the time. People, well, you know, I want to get my kids in first. Well, your kids need you to bring them in. If you had dropped dead from a heart attack, what good are you? So, right. I, it's, to me, it's like I think people need to, because you're going to see more of that, Doctor Hill. We're going to see less and less insurance, and in the reality is pretty soon there's going to be no insurance for chiropractic. And I don't know if that's weeding out people that are in our profession that don't want to teach, but I think it's important that people be very. I mean, that's why, you know, you've got all these programs, whether it's C4, C, uh, you know, Close for Cairo, or, you know, I, I, Scott Sawyer is a big teacher. You've got different people out there teaching how to run a cash-based practice by going through a, you know, a method of teaching people on, you know, a daily basis to get them to understand the big idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and here's the other thing. So... Yeah, Number one is money. Thing. It's always follow the money. I mean, money is always like first and foremost. And then the second thing we hear all the time is, what am I getting? What's right. in it for me? No, what, what, are what are you giving back? Right. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I, I hate to slam the millennials, but they're not big joiners. So I can tell you right Why now. I, I, I want to understand that. I get in trouble for using I Sometimes I call people millennials and I don't call it in a derogatory sense. You know, I, I use it because they're way better at a lot of things than I'll ever be because they grew up with computers and I didn't. I, they own this stuff. They understand how to market using computers and Facebook and social media and drop 
you know, dripping this and drop that and link this and all the stuff that I'm just like a friggin' dinosaur to. And I'm that's why I'd love to hire millennials because they're helping satisfy something that I just have no I'm a friggin' idiot when it comes to, I'm, call myself a moron when it comes to that uh, but that's why you know I like a phone that plugs into the wall I don't even have a cell phone as you know because I'm just I'm behind the times in a lot of things and that's why I need people like millennials to help me with things that I'm really weak at right so it's not so, a negative thing it's just right they are who they are you know they're also yeah. more into sustainability they like having small houses and living in you know, cars that are more eco-sensitive. And uh, and those are all great attributes, which I totally agree. I mean, I don't know why they think it's a negative thing when we use that term. I don't get, you know, I don't get bummed out when people call me a fossil or, a, you know, a dinosaur. I just know that's who I am. Yeah. So, or a baby boomer. You know, just, just to bring them into the conversation, they're not big joiners. So I've invited all of them to get on my committee process. And I've invited them in to the conversation, like, what do you want? So what they're saying is, we want a different convention format. And this is something you might want to consider. They don't want to sit and get the fire hose format where you get speaker after speaker after speaker, giving them a ton of information two or three days. They, they want to have interaction. They want workshops. They want play dates. And they want... You know, all that kind of stuff. Well, so they I should brought, start and, that themselves. I mean, I mean I've mean, i done uh, really well with Cal Jam. I'm not going to change the format just because I, well, I, and because I don't like that kind of – I don't like workshops. Right. and You don't, don't like, like play dates? No, I don't like that stuff. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, maybe I maybe you do attract an older crowd or something. But, I mean, I've got a lot of students that follow us too. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are certain degrees that do like the fire hose. I like information and I like rock and roll, so that's why I put those two together. And I like to celebrate, you know, you know me, and, and right. I know you yeah. like to celebrate. I, you yeah. know, I've seen you at the after party, so I know <laughs> that you know we're two like spirits when it comes to letting your hair down once in a while. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. And again, there's plenty of those seminars out there for people to, you know, whatever your play dates, whatever that means. I don't even know what a play date <laughs> is. What is a play date? I don't know. I didn't have kids just like you, so okay. you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, you know, it's just inviting them into the conversation and figuring them out. And, you know, I would just say anybody anywhere should be contributing back to the profession in some way. And it's, you know, either be a speaker, get involved politically, or like you, you know, give your money monthly and let me do the work for you. Just, you know, you've got to you got to pick what's going to work for you. It's adjustment a month. To exactly. protect your rights to practice chiropractic. And you just do what we back. can to rub shoulders with people that make decisions on the legislature of where health is going in this state and ultimately in the country because every California leads the state. All the other states follow our lead. Uh, I don't know why that is, but for, why is that? We have more chiropractors in the state of California we're the biggest association on the no, planet. I mean, no, it's not, it's not even chiropractic. It's just that even, all health seems to come from, you know, health models and health frequencies. And, and, and it just seems like this California is more of a mecca for the healing arts than, say, Arkansas or Louisiana. I'm not saying anything derogatory about those states. I'm just saying that I don't know if it's because people here are just more health conscious than they are in other places. I mean, you go to Wisconsin, you know, and it's not that... It's just people seem to here to be more in tune with the universe and in tune with just living congruently. I don't know. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we're on the ocean. We've got sunshine. You know, we, we basically we're embrace that lifestyle. We're up in some igloo, you know, freezing our asses <laughs> off in North Dakota, right? You know, it's like where it's negative 30 out. It's like, gee, I don't know how people live in that stuff, to be honest. I don't either. I came from there. You know, I always say to well, people, I came like, from Omaha. Oh. Yeah, I know. I lived in Wisconsin, yeah. too. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. We're in the best state for wellness. And, and being active. Other- I think that's part of it. You know, we, we're like, I'm surfing every day. You know, I can't eat a bunch of Munster. I can't eat a bunch of Munster cheese. Say that fast 10 times. I can't eat a bunch of Munster cheese and eat a bunch of summer sausages and drink a bunch of 
schlitz and then expect myself to be in physical shape to go out and surf, you know? So, right. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're leading it. And then the other thing, just on top of that too, Billy, we are the sixth leading economy on the planet. Right. And, right. And yeah. California yeah. is a state. That's a great point right five there. Countries. Right. Yeah. Right. We could be like our own little country if we really wanted to be. And I think Good. that's where some people are pushing. So, uh, let me ask you one more question. I got to wrap this up because I got to get my teeth worked on. I got to get them buffed out for the show. <laughs> they look pretty good. They do look good. I take care of my teeth just like I take care of my spine. And I think it's more important sure. that people, that's what I need people to understand. Why, you go to a dentist. Why has the dental profession done so much better about educating the public about what they do? And I mean, I think part of it is people see their teeth every day, you know, and when you got a bunch of crap on your teeth, it's pretty visible. But when you got spinal decay, that's not something you're going to see very often. Right. Uh, do you still have many people echoing the, 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 the ACA alignment the CCA previously had in years past? Because I know a lot of chiropractors, you don't hear that very much? I don't hear it at all. Okay. Because there's a couple people I could name right off, but I won't name. That's their main reason for not joining. I'm going, dude, get, I mean, I know somebody touched your pee-pee when you were like two years old, but get over it, all right? It's like, it's going to be okay. We have new leadership and things are going to be okay. All right, what do you want to say in closing? Because we got to wrap this thing up. Thank you for coming on the call today. Yeah, thank I'm, you I'm, for inviting I, me. I feel honored to be speaking to the president of the CCA Associ uh, Chiropractic Association. Cal well, I just want to say I love you. I love Cal Jam. I love, you I love what you're doing. I love this profession. We're going to have um, an entire room of people that have drawn the line in the sand. We're going to all be hanging out. And I would just encourage everybody to make Cal Jam your best speed dating experience. And I don't mean, you know, speed dating to find a lover, but we are lovers in this profession and let's love each other. And let's really like put that drop in the quantum field because, and you mentioned the heart. I mean, you started this whole conversation with the book about the heart. The heart is the most electromagnetic organ system on the planet so let's just expand that. It put is it totally in tapped into the cosmos, honey. Absolutely. So I would just end on that. Let's just raise consciousness and let's love each other. God bless you. Thank you so much for taking time today. Signing off, Billy D with Leslie Hewitt, another amazing pre Cal Jam podcast. This is the greatest chiropractic event on the planet. First impressions are everything, and when you walk in, you see the crowd, you see the stage set up, you hear the band. The camaraderie was incredible, impressive, and I really felt like I was connected with my community.